Impressive, is it not? Fit for a leader, meant to show influence and the burden of it. It is where the Inquisition will sit in judgment, where you will sit in judgment. Who will I be judging exactly? Those who have done wrong. You will know of them, at the very least. All this presumes they have survived their initial encounter with you, of course. Still more lives in my hands. You are a beacon of law, Inquisitor, as others retreat from responsibility. But this needn't be bloody. The Inquisition's sovereignty is derived from the Allies who validate it. You are both empowered and bound. Justice has many tools. If their application is clever, execution may even seem merciful by comparison. Is there anyone I should judge? Take the throne when you're ready. We will bring him before you. This was a surprise. After you return from the bogs, we discovered this man attacking. The building. With a... goat. Chief Mavran the Under. He feels slighted by the killing of his Avar tribesmen, who repeatedly attacked you first. What should we do with him? Where should he go? You're a chieftain of the Avar. Will your attacks persist? <laughs> a courtroom? Unnecessary. You killed my idiot son, and I answered, as is my custom, by smacking your holdings with goat's blood. Don't look at me. No foul. You meant to murder Tevinters, but got feisty with your Inquisition. A red-headed mother guarantees a brat. Do as you've earned, Inquisitor. My clan yields. My remaining boys have brains still in their heads. It seems our conflict was accidental, Chief Movran, but it can't be repeated. I banish you and your clan, with as many weapons as you can carry, to Tevinter. <laughs> My idiot boy got us something after all. <laughs>
you recall Gerion Alexius of Tevinter. Ferelden has given him to us as an acknowledgement of your aid. The formal charges are apostasy, attempted enslavement, and attempt in assassination, on your own life, no less. Tevinter has disowned and stripped him of his rank. You may judge the former magister as you see fit. I remember what would have happened to Thedas if his treachery had succeeded. I couldn't save my son. Do you think my fate matters to me? Will you offer nothing more in your defense? You've won nothing. The people you saved, the acclaim you've gathered. You'll lose it all in the storm to come. Render your judgment, Inquisitor. You swore to the mages you'd help them. I will have you uphold that promise. Fiona will take charge of you. Any knowledge, favor, or coin you own will go towards the mages' future. A headsman would have been kinder. Someone emptied a hole. Need something? I've read your tale of the champion, and I have a few questions. That's a pretty common reaction. Go ahead. There is no way Hawk really could have killed the Arish Shock. It would have started a war with the Kunari. I was told later that the Kunari disavowed his actions. Apparently, the Arashok didn't get permission before he attacked Kirkwall, and the Kuhn didn't want another exalted march. When they finally sent a ship to haul the wrecked Dreadnought away, they just said, We will never speak of this again. As far as I can tell, that's the Kuhn's version of an apology. Carry on. Need something? I want to know more about Red Lyrian. I'll tell you what I can. So what is it? Just another kind of Lyrian? The red stuff is Lyrium like a dragon is a lizard. It's not just a different color. It has a whole host of weirdness all its own. I've written to every mining cast house in Orzammar. No one's seen this stuff before or knows where it came from. What makes it special? Regular lyrium can mess you up pretty badly, but you have to ingest it for that to happen. Red lyrium messes with your mind when you're just near the stuff. You hear singing, get violent, paranoid, and then it does creepy shit. Makes things float, brings statues to life. It also turned Kirkwall's night commander to lyrium. Everyone's been kept at least a hundred paces from it since. How did the Red Lyrium get in the Temple of Sacred Ashes? I don't know. So as far as I knew, the only piece to make it to the surface was destroyed. And the location of the Taig it came from is a secret. Did someone find more of it in the Deep Roads? That's not a cheery thought. What could the Templars want with it? In Kirkwall, just having the Lyrium idol made Knight Commander Meredith impossibly strong before it turned her into a Lyrium statue, anyway. Maybe they thought the power was worth it, or maybe they didn't know the consequences. I 
I think that's enough on Red Lyrian. Yeah, not really my favorite subject. Need something? Can I ask you something, Varric? You want to talk about me? <laughs> I'm flattered. Also inclined toward extravagant lies. How do you and Cassandra know each other? You heard about the Kirkwall Chantry being destroyed? The guy responsible used to be a friend of mine. The Seeker had questions about that, and I had answers. I'm not clear on your line of work. You're a merchant. I'm a businessman. My family has a seat in the Dwarven Merchants Guild. Merchants buy and sell goods. Businessmen buy and sell stores. In my spare time, I manage a spy network, and occasionally, I write books. Thanks, Ferry. No problem. What was this place? So much room for... Greetings. What do you know about the Fade? A great deal, from my wanderings. There are a few hard facts, but I can share what I've learned. I'd like to know more about the Veil. Circle mages call it a barrier between this world and the Fade. But according to my studies in ancient elven lore, that is a vast oversimplification. Without it, imagine if spirits entered freely. The Fade was not a place one went, but a state of nature like the wind. It sounds like it would be wonderful. And dangerous. But yes, a world where imagination defines reality. Where spirits are as common as trees or grass. Instead, spirits are strange and fearful, and the Fade is a terrifying world touched only by mages and dreamers. I am glad that I'm not alone in seeing the beauty of such a world, along with the obvious peril. I'd like to know more about the Breach. Simply put, it is a tear in the veil between this world and the Fade, allowing spirits to enter the world physically. Small tears occur naturally when magic weakens the veil, or when spirits cluster at an area that has seen many deaths. But your anchor, as Corypheus calls it, allows you some control over the breach. That suggests it was deliberate. I'd like to know more about demons. Your circle says that demons hate the natural world and seek to bring their chaos and destruction to the living. But such simplistic labels misconstrue their motivations, and in so doing, do all a great disservice. Spirits wish to join the living. And a demon is that wish gone wrong. Is there a way to coexist? To live with them? If not in peace, at least without such active confrontation? Not in the world we know today. The Veil creates a barrier that makes true understanding most unlikely. But the question is a good one. And it matters that you thought to ask. We'll talk later. Goodbye. I can do to help your efforts at restoring the circle. After the circles fell, their libraries were plundered by scavengers. A thousand years of recorded knowledge in the hands of bandits. It makes me sick to think of it. I've received news that some tomes have been located, if you are interested in writing this wrong. I'll look into it for you. If you can take care of this matter, the circle would be in your debt. Yes? Do you think 
that you and I might someday. You and I? Don't be absurd, my dear. I'm sorry. So am I. Inquisitor. I was not expecting a visit. You had little in But as dear Josephine says, it's never too late to make a friend. I hope I'm not disrupting anything. The commander was just delivering... the names of those we lost at Haven. You must blame me for this. We all saw who attacked us. We know exactly who to blame. I keep wondering if I could have done something different. When the first of my lookouts went missing, I pulled the rest back, awaiting more information. If they'd stayed in the field, they could have bought us more time. I was afraid to lose my agents. And instead, we lost Haven. You look out for your people. That's a good thing. Is it? My people know their duty. They know the risks. They understand that the Inquisition may call upon them to give their lives. True. There are soldiers. They'll do what we need them to. If Corypheus is cold, I must be colder. War demands sacrifices of us all. Reports of Phaedrifts and demons keep coming. The only thing that will calm their fears now is that you have to be that someone. Seal them. Your legend will spread and Thedas will learn to trust the Inquisition. In Redcliffe, you sacrificed yourself so that I could return here. Of course I did. One small life in exchange for a second chance at history. I always loved a bargain. It was still a sacrifice, and still noble. And I would do it again. Anything I should know? It seems that the Olesian army is await. Some of the generals are sim- Our actions are under a great deal of scrutiny. I've arranged an accord between the Marquis and the Dowager. Wonder of wonders. Perhaps they can be useful to us after all.
Are you all right, Leliana? <sighs> Are you? I suppose not. Haven was trying. Let us begin. To work? Can you arrange what we discussed earlier, Ambassador? I found the money. The Inquisition will compensate the families of those we lost at
Inquisitor, welcome to the Exalted Plains, a place with a long and bloody history. Even now, the region is volatile. This was a front in the Civil War. Now there's rebels called the Freemen of the Dales, recently emerged and adding to the chaos. Must we dwell on such gloomy things? I don't want to dwell, but look, it must have been so beautiful, maybe even romantic. That will be all. With the rifts, we have to... Good luck, your worship. This might interest you, sir. What is it? This...
I wonder why. I'd say it's the perfect reason to go to the ramparts. I must tend to our fallen. What's happened here? We were trying to re- It starts- It must be magic. But the free men are just deserters from the- It was easier when we fought- Yes, your worship. being deliberately drawn here. There may be more.
Varric, you fought Corypheus once before. Not my fondest memory, but yes, I did. And you killed him. You were certain of his death. Yes. What's on your mind, Chuckles? He survived the explosion that destroyed the Conclave. If he can live through a blast that levels a mountaintop, we would do well to determine how. Even if we knew, would that help us? The Wardens couldn't kill him, and they had a thousand years to figure it out. Something here. Let's look around. Inquisitor.
Goblins are coming from down there. Hurry. By the way, Varric, you write some nice fight scenes. Well, thank you. I'm surprised you think so. They're not exactly realistic. Hmm. I figured that out when the good guy did a backflip while wearing a chainmail shirt. And that didn't bother you? Back in Zaharon, I fell on a guy who... I felt the blade chip as it went through my gut and hit my back ribs. But I was alive and on top. I soared through the armor on the rebel's neck, Back and forth until it went red. I don't need a book to remind me that the world is full of horrible crap. Uh, impossible swashbuckling it is.
what hap what happened what happened to you not being able to come back? What happened to you not being able to come back? Yes. What happened to you not being able to come back? So, why are you back? Um, I don't know. Why should we? Who are you listening to? Hold on a second. Great. <laughs> you know what I find odd? Why is it that... I have a question. Why do you think this stuff always happens? Like... Is this... Like, like for example, Mask stops joining us, right? But then we end up getting this guy named Nick showing up, and it's like, why? Oh, that's right, because you had... Because you had to become friends with him on Xbox. This didn't work out very well, did it? Um... Alright, stop doing that. Alright, now Fireline, I have a question. Uh, but I have a question, though. It is why did this had to happen, though? Like, I don't know. It, w it was good when that happened, when, we, when Mass stopped joining, but then... Of course, somebody else said to join in his place. No, I'm just wondering is why did somebody... But why did somebody have to join in his place? Couldn't have it gone back to just that? That would have been fun though, I think. I don't know. I don't know. As, lo as long as you can... As long as it's uh, Fireline that sets up the match so that it's a good match and not what you had set up. 